How in practice did the study take place in the Kalafate Health District? How exactly did we do this? Well, we had the list of 40 selected villages and we had three teams to perform the study in the villages. Each team was composed of two people. One person was responsible for grading the trachoma, the person who actually examined the children since our study dealt with children suffering from the active form of trachoma, which is to say FT or follicular trachoma and IT or intense inflammatory trachoma. Each team was composed of two people, one responsible for grading trachoma and the other for filling in the study sheet. When we arrive in a village, what happens? First, we go to the village chief and explain to him the reason for our presence in the village. Once satisfied that he understands the objective of our presence, we ask his permission to visit concessions with the help of some people from the village. We then go to the center of the village, and there we take, say, a bottle. We spin it, and according to the direction in which the bottle points, we will take that direction. We will not choose which concessions to visit. We will start either on the left or the right, and we will decide if it's the first or second or third on the left, and so on and so forth, throughout the village. That's how we will work. Once we arrive in the concession, with the help of the guide given to us by the village chief, we introduce ourselves. We are health workers and we take care of eyes, and we have come to examine children 1 to 10 years old to see if they might have a sickness that leads to blindness in adulthood. Once we have the consent of the head of household, and this consent we have to get on paper, so we have a stamp pad and get a fingerprint to indicate that the head of household agrees with what we are about to do. After that, we ask all the children from 1 to 10 years old to present themselves and the two people who do the grading choose a good place to work. After all, we need light and a magnifying glass to examine the children. All the children are examined one by one. The upper eyelid, first the right eye, then the left eye. We we'll look to see if there are any signs of follicular or inflammatory trachoma and we record the name, age, sex and result. The second person validates everything and so it goes on. We examine all the children 1 to 10 years old in the concession. Once we have finished, we conduct an educational session. We give a bar of soap to all the women with children in the concession and we ask them to wash their children's faces with soap morning and evening and we also ask them to attend to personal and environmental hygiene. If more than 10% of children 1 to 10 years old have follicular trachoma, the safe strategy is applied to all inhabitants of the region. The SAFE strategy combines surgical management of patients with entropion trichiasis, antibiotic treatment of the entire population, hygiene education in villages and schools, and improvement in standard of living, especially by improving access to water. In 2006, in the Kolofata Health District, the prevalence of follicular trachoma was shown by our study to be 21%. This high figure was confirmed by a second study, done in 2007, that found 24% of all children 1 to 10 years old were affected by follicular trachoma and 75 by inflammatory trachoma. It was therefore decided 
to apply the safe strategy. Antibiotic treatment of trachoma has made considerable progress in the past 20 years. The use of sulfonamides was abandoned because of frequent allergies and replaced by tetracycline eye ointment, which remains one of the possible treatments and a cheap one for trachoma. However, to be effective, the treatment with tetracycline eye ointment must continue for several weeks, which explains the poor compliance associated with its use. In 1980, the discovery of azithromycin and, ten years later, its use in the treatment of trachoma revolutionized the management of the illness. Derived from erythromycin, this antibiotic has the advantages of a good bioavailability when taken per OS, very good tissue diffusion and intracellular penetration, as well as a prolonged half-life. This medicine was proven to be effective against trachoma when taken by mouse once a year for three years. Beginning in 1999, through the intermediary of the NGO ITI, Pfizer Laboratories began providing this treatment for free to countries endemic for trachoma. To date, more than 200 million antibiotic treatments have been distributed by ITI in 18 countries. Azithromycin has therefore logically become the standard treatment recommended by the WHO. In the mid-1990s, there appeared the systemic form of azithromycin, a well-known antibiotic active against chlamydia, and this azithromycin really gave birth to great hope that trachoma might be eliminated from the face of the earth in a way that might have seemed easy at first. It is thanks to the boost generated by the arrival of azithromycin that an organization was set up, the Alliance for the Elimination of Trachoma by the year 2020. At around the same time, or a little later, there arose an interest in developing a formulation that would be active in the form of drops rather than using an antibiotic given systemically. The development of these drops has a number of advantages, in particular that of giving an ocular treatment while at the same time doing some health education with the groups of people being treated. These drops also have the advantage of treating the disease where it develops, on the infected conjunctiva, in contrast to the oral form which has above all a systemic action and thus the theoretical risk of creating new resistance when used for mass treatment. The French pharmaceutical company Thea was the first to develop and commercialize a topical form of azithromycin. There has been a long-standing relationship between the Chibre family and trachoma. This began in the 19th century with Paul Chibre, founder of the SFO, who was very interested in the disease, but it was my father especially, soon after the Second World War, with the arrival of antibiotics, invested a lot of effort in the disease. As a matter of fact, the only photo he had in his office was that of Dr. Antoine, a woman ophthalmologist who crossed the Sahara, working on trachoma in the oasis and particularly among the Tuareg. As for myself, as soon as I heard that the WHO was urging the pharmaceutical industry to develop a topical azithromycin, I seized the opportunity to become involved with the disease myself. I did not think it would be so long, nearly 10 years, because azithromycin is a particularly unstable compound. So at the last moment we were able to find an excipient, milial, capable of producing a solution that was stable. And most importantly, stable in a warm environment, which is essential for Africa. This, then, is how the Azaisa adventure began. In 2004, a study is undertaken in Guinea and in Pakistan. It proves the effectiveness of azithromycin eye drops against trachoma. Three groups of children 
with active trachoma are treated either with a single dose of oral azithromycin or with azithromycin eye drops morning and evening for two or three days. The results show oral azithromycin and azithromycin eye drops to be of equal effectiveness against trachoma in children. TIA Laboratory is having agreed to freely provide the doses of eye drops. An agreement is drawn between Ophthalmo Sans Frontières and the Cameroonian Health Authorities for the launching of a campaign to treat the entire population of the Colofata district. Having proven the effectiveness of azite drops against trachoma in Guinea Conakry and in Pakistan, which paved the way for TIA laboratories to obtain authorization to put it on the market, it was decided, together with the NGO OSF, to undertake a vast treatment campaign in the district of Kalafata. In this area, trachoma has a very high prevalence, over 30%. And it was decided to treat the entire population, that is to say, over 100,000 people, once a year for three years. This required quite hefty logistics, since in the first year of treatment, we had to ship more than 700,000 unit doses from Paris to Yaoundé, with a view to treating a population of over 100,000 people. The organization of such a campaign requires careful preparation of logistics and personnel. Regular meetings are held to put into place procedures for the distribution of materials and the different stages of the campaign. I am the stock manager for the program, Together Let's Fight Tracoma. This is the second year I've worked in this program. I am responsible for the stock. I divide it up by village and I come to work every morning very early in order to give the materials to the health worker before they leave for the field. I also go out in the field to verify the effectiveness of the work. And at the end, I again receive the health worker and verify the empty vials brought back to reassure myself that the drops were not used for other purposes. The district population is advised by the local authorities, prefecture, hospital, village chiefs, of the dates and modalities of treatment expected to take place over three days. 250 community health workers are in charge of instilling one eye drop, morning and evening for three days, in each eye of all the inhabitants of the health district. The therapeutic coverage of the population is excellent. Over 96% during each campaign in 2008, 2009 and 2010. I'm telling you, the community health worker also works really hard, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I was just with the health worker who just now finished his first round of drops, which means for the second round he'll be finishing after midnight. But he keeps going anyway. People have accepted having us knocking at their door in the night to be treated, because there isn't enough time during the day to treat everyone. So early in the morning at 6 o'clock, the community health worker begins his work and only now at 2.30 p.m. he has finished. The second round will not end until after midnight. That's why I say our community health worker have really worked hard to do what they were asked to do.